Hello, this is Tony Hiller from RockClimateScience.com with the latest in science, art, and mathematics from our friends on the left. The U.S. Global Change Research Program wants people to submit climate art. Climate protesters have been contributing a lot to the art world recently. This is some of their top artists throwing tomato soup on a Van Gogh painting. And here they are gluing themselves to another Van Gogh. Another climate artist in Germany glued himself to the pavement and now may have to get his hand amputated. Lebe Aktion von Last Generation in Mainz und es ist die erste Aktion dieser Art in der Universitätsstadt und die erste Klebeaktion in Rheinland-Pfalz. I wasn't sure whether to file this entry under art or science. This is my personal favorite for global warming art, the March 1st, 1975 cover of Science News. The Ice Age cometh. Personally, I think this is much better art than throwing soup on a Van Gogh. Now let's move on to science. We've known for years global warming could lead to a new ice age. Why is no one doing anything? I don't think that's a very fair question because some people are throwing soup on Van Goghs and gluing themselves to the street. Between vandalizing art and building lots of giant bird choppers, that should probably stop the new ice age. And it would appear that somebody did stop the new ice age about 50 years ago. Here's a story from Seth Borenstein at the Associated Press saying that Alaska is burning up this month. But people in Anchorage might disagree. They're buried in snow after having their wettest year on record. Here's some social science from Billy Baldwin, Alec Baldwin's brother. Make America Great Again is still furious that Brittany Griner was released. Is it because she's black, a woman, an activist, or all of the above? Isabella Maria DeLuca responded, No, we're actually still mad that your brother shot and killed a woman has had no consequences. Is it because he's rich, a man, a Democrat, or all of the above? A number of Democrats responded to her saying the shooting was an accident. So apparently some Democrats believe it's an accident when one of their own points a gun at somebody else for no reason, pulls the trigger, and kills them. Here's some science from Switzerland. They want everybody driving electric cars, but won't actually allow them to use them. Switzerland considers electric car bans during electricity shortages, which were created by government. And here's a green genius from Germany. He's finally figured out that you can't generate wind-powered electricity when the wind is not blowing. Sometimes the wind in Britain doesn't blow for more than a week. On December 11th at 4 p.m., wind power was generating 1.39% of the UK's electricity and solar was generating zero. But The Guardian says you can fix this problem by spending 50 billion pounds. It isn't clear to me how 20,000 motionless windmills generate any more electricity than 10,000 motionless windmills. But I'm not qualified to ask this question because, as Gerald Cutney points out, I don't have a degree in climate science. And here's some mathematics from the Washington Post. Why doesn't Argentina have more black players in the World Cup? As fans keep up with Argentina's success in this year's World Cup, a familiar question arises. Why doesn't Argentina's team have more black players? In stark contrast to other South American countries such as Brazil, Argentina's soccer team pales in comparison in terms of its black representation. Argentina is in the final and Brazil isn't, so apparently Argentina picked their team based on their skill set rather than the color of their skin. This was the dream which Martin Luther King had hoped for for his children. Will be transformed into an oasis of freedom and justice. I have a dream. My four little children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin, but by the content of their character. I have a dream today. I know a number of white people who voted for Barack Obama because he was black. They wanted to prove to themselves that they don't vote for people based on the color of their skin. So they voted for Barack Obama based on the color of his skin. For some reason, though, it doesn't seem to bother the people at the Washington Post that white people are severely underrepresented on the French team. White people make up 85% of France, but they represent less than 50% of the starting 11. 
The constant obsession with race by the far left is disturbing, as is their mathematics. In the original version of this article, they calculated that 1% of the population of Argentina was black. The actual percentage of Argentina which is black is about one-third of one percent, so the Washington Post described their math error as an editing error. If the Washington Post actually believed that Argentina's soccer team should be racially weighted based on the census, then given the small size of the team, there would be no black players playing for them. Which leads me back to Malcolm X's description of white liberals. There are many whites who are trying to solve the problem. But you never see them going under the label of liberals. That, that white person that you see calling himself a liberal is the most dangerous thing in the entire Western Hemisphere. He's the most deceitful. He's like a fox. The Washington Post thinks the world is going to end in about eight years, so it isn't clear to me what it is they're worried about. And the world may end sooner than that for the Washington Post, who've lost half a million subscribers over the last two years. It may be that the readers are tired of their fake news, race baiting, junk science, and conspiracy theories. The craziness of the left gives Toto plenty of things to bark about, and he's been doing it now for 15 years. You can visit him, Kyrie Caesar, Toki Upalan, the four new puppies on the web at realclimatescience.com.